Good evening. It's 6.30. We'll call the planning. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And You've got an echo. Yeah. I believe Molly was first. You're on mute, Bill. Yep. Hello. Hello. Yes, Molly was first. You're up, Molly. Um, okay, so um, I had sent a drawing to um, to all of you and also to the DPW director. Um, we had Taylor Davison to look at the possibility of expanding the parking area at 104 Middle Street. Um, <clears throat> we had them come in and take a look at a variety of um, ways to accomplish that. And uh, the design that they've come up with would add five... Um, lined off parking spaces immediately to the left of the driveway coming into the property. Um, so the DPW director um, indicated via email that he had no issues with the plan. And then I just wanted to get a sense from your board tonight what you're, what you're thinking about it. So I did send it around to everybody, but can you share the plan or do you need me to? Uh, no, I've got it here. I can share it, Bill. Okay, let me just approve you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so basically, if you're familiar with the property, Middle Street's down here. Um, this is the existing driveway in. You cross over the tree belt um, to get onto the property. There's a side entrance that the um, doctor who originally had the property used uh, for access. And so these spaces would go immediately to the left of that. Um, in the drawing, what you're looking at is, uh, see this kind of green area? Um, what Taylor Davis uh, is recommending is that we use you know, landscaping for two purposes. One, to make it more attractive and we want to kind of cover as much of the view of the um, pavement from the road as possible. Um, but they're also um, suggesting that we introduce landscaping that would serve the purpose of um, uh, being able to absorb any runoff created from the pavement. Um, what you can't really see here is that from the driveway to this grassy area, this actually slopes slightly downwards. So the flow um, of rainwater would be more likely going in this direction as opposed to out this way. So I think that's why um, DPW director didn't have an issue with it. Um, but we would, you know, we would want to make it again as attractive as possible, absorb um, any runoff. And this area over here, there's still a pretty fair amount of green space um, between where this the pavement would end, even with the landscaping, and then the fence um, that separates our property from the congregational church would be over here. Oh, so that green line is not your property. It goes your property goes further to the left. Yeah, our property actually would kind of run off of this page. Okay. Yep. Which where's uh, Middle Street, top or bottom? Uh, bottom. Middle Street is on the bottom, Joe. And the church would be to the left. Yeah, the church would be over here. Uh, right. So there's a uh, a big town setback there. Are you encroaching on the town property? Where's the town line? Um, we've been told that the town line is basically midway through the sidewalk. So where, where is the sidewalk? That's the sidewalk there, Joe, Joe not Middle Street. Yeah, town, town sidewalk oh, okay. is here. Sidewalk, I got you. I, I'm, I'm square away now. Yeah. I got you. I just want to throw in something. I got a uh, message that the uh, Zoom meeting will end because uh, we, we're into 40 minutes into it. Um, I created this on a town account. I don't know if that's going to happen. It shouldn't happen. But uh, if it does, just uh, sign in using the same uh, link that you signed in with previously, and we'll, uh, 
we'll just pick up where we left, left off. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking there's a, the majority of the front yard is all, uh, there's very limited paving and there's also green on the other area. So I don't think they're exceeding, I mean, I don't have the numbers, but I can't imagine that they're exceeding maximum impervious. Oh, they're, not, they're not exceeding maximum impervious on this property. The thing is, Middle Street has a very wide right of way. Most, most towns in Hadley are 50 feet. I want to say Middle Street is probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, 200 feet close to it. So they go from sidewalk to sidewalk. So the actual front yard of many properties on Middle Street is not that deep. But mm. from the road, it's way back. Right, right. So, yeah, the fact that they're only a 20-foot setback, but the, the amount of green space there is massive between Middle Street and the beginning of their paved area. Right. So you can't technically count all of that town green. No, we, we can't count it, but the, I mean, it's also not written in stone that you can't park. It's really to keep a big green space, and there will, there will be a big green space between Middle Street and this parking area. Yeah. I have no objections. Any other questions or comments? My only concern is how the introduction of more impervious surface will affect uh, site drainage. So when we initially did a waiver of site plan approval, it was on the basis that basically there'd be no changes or, mm -hmm. or very minor changes. And now we're in introducing what 25 feet by call it 45 feet mm -hmm. of impervious surface um, next to the driveway which probably slopes down towards middle street yeah it actually slopes this way bill oh you mean the, the existing driveway yeah yeah the existing driveway would slope towards middle um where this is coming in, the land right now currently slopes away from the driveway. To the north, right? To the north, yeah. So, what do you want to have just to do a quick, have somebody do a quick review, look, an engineer look at it, Mike? I mean, uh, Bill? I think it'd be, it'd be useful just to have someone say that, um, you know, the drainage is going to and, and I don't know whether the landscape contractor is sufficiently versed in this to, uh, to address it. It doesn't seem, it, it's not like we need a full-blown drainage study, but and just like some assurance that the uh, drainage is going to go to the north and that there is enough absorption area in there so that it's not going to flow onto the, uh, the church parcel. Yeah, it was um, Steve from Taylor Davis that came over. Um, so he's the one that did this. Steve Severin, is that his name? Yeah, so he's the one that did this drawing. Um, he may actually be an engineer, Bill. I don't know, but I can certainly okay. find out. Do you have a plot plan when you bought the place, Molly? Something that would show the whole property and the setback? Uh, yep, that was the one that uh, Randy Iser did. Do you want me to look for that now, see if I can find it? Yes, please. Or, or just if I come back? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can dig that out. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did not take advantage of your offer to go look at it before tonight, because that could have assuaged our concerns if we could actually see the grading. Yeah, that's what I um, was hoping, but I also was well aware of the fact that it was a holiday weekend. <laughs> so, and I figure if, um, if we have to come back, then let me just see if I can find it in the property file here. Full disclosure, I am 
client of uh, Molly's and I had driven through there and I do, I have parked on the grass and I do re recall that it does go down a bit, but I, I wouldn't say it's a lot. It could be somewhere between six to 12 inches, but it is, I do recall that when I pull off on that left and parked on the grass, it was down, down toward the north. Bill, you don't happen to have it handy, do you? I do not. Uh, hang on. I don't think I do, but let me uh, let me see if I can find something here. Yeah, sorry, this is a rather voluminous folder I'm looking at. So, parking proposal. Yeah, for, for some reason, I'm not coming up with any emails from you prior to this June. Maybe I'm... That's okay. I mean, if, 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 you're going to need to get some kind of a little bit of a review that says there's not a big drainage, Molly, so you can bring the plot plan at the next meeting. Yeah, that would that would be probably the best idea. Yeah. Um, Two weeks from tonight. Okay, we're just going to ask. Okay. June 19th. Um, yeah, I mean, July 19th, if I say June 19th. July 19th. Okay. Yeah, I'll see what I can get done before then. Okay. Okay. Um, again, it's telling me I have less than a minute here. I am going to end this meeting and then restart it. And um, I have the list of, of order. So um, I'll just uh, resume the order. So just, uh, just log back in and I'll uh, um, maybe I'll just abolish the uh, waiting room this time. See you shortly. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next uh, Mike Gagnon. Mr. Gagnon, here we are. Good evening. Everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, uh, Mike Gagnon uh, with SLR, uh, for the record, senior civil engineer. Uh, I'm on behalf of Amherst Development Associates for the rehabilitation of 401 Russell Street. Um, I'm sure everybody is familiar with the site. It is the former, or it, it is currently the Howard Johnson's uh, motel uh, facility there. And what is being planned is essentially a new office building uh, in the place of the current um, motel building, uh, which will be virtually uh, eliminated as well as parking area improvements, drainage, uh, utilities, et cetera. Um, I don't know if Kurt Shumway is on uh, from Amherst Development. Uh, he was gonna, going to try to make it, uh, recognizing this is kind of the, the pre-meeting before the official public hearing um, for this project, but um, you know, Bill had asked me to come on to just kind of give you an intro, you know, quick intro and any updates. Um, as you recall, we were, did a conceptual plan uh, presentation to the board uh, back on October 19th, 2021. Um, since that time, we've been busy, um, you know, assembling the site plans. Um, Con Riddle, uh, who's the project architect, has developed uh, a perspective rendering um, of the building site as well as building elevations. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we've also been <clears throat> before your conservation commission, uh, we actually had a hearing um, on June 14th, um, which has continued to July 12th, simply uh, because 
DEP had not um, issued a file number yet for the project. Um, consequent, or I should say subsequent to that meeting, um, we did get a file number uh, and we only got essentially one administrative comment with respect to um, the ownership uh, of the project site. Um, other than that, um, no technical comments were received from DEP, um, recognizing, you know, this is a redevelopment project uh, pursuant to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, so, you know, with that, I, I, I'd be glad to share with you uh, what the current rendering looks like, um, just to kind of give you a perspective. But, you know, other than that, in the absence of, you know, going through, you know, we will be prepared to uh, present um, at, at the um, public hearing uh, when, that, uh, when that time comes. And one other thing to note, um, Berkshire Design Group has been retained um, as the peer review. Um, for this project. So they are currently uh, reviewing the materials with the idea of being once we come before you um, for the public hearing, uh, we'll hopefully will have resolved um, all of their technical comments that they may have. Okay. So you actually want to apply for this for the site plan, site plan uh, tonight? Correct. Okay. Um, we could schedule you for As early, let's see. August 2nd. Yeah, we could schedule you for August 2nd. Will you be ready for that? Or do you is, want to it later? Yeah, August 2nd is a little more. It would, let's say for some reason, I, I'm hoping. I'm anticipating we will be ready from from my standpoint, especially since um, you know we don't have any technical comments that we need to address from DEP. Um, you know, we would have to address any comments uh, from Berkshire Design, obviously, and not knowing what those are. Um, and we still have the July 12th um, hearing for conservation. And our expectations are is that hopefully, you know, we would be able to close that hearing. But I, you know, I can't speak of certain oh, for them. I, I won't be here on the second. I might be able to log in from the Cape, but. Okay. How about the 16th? By, by, yeah. by the sound of it, Mike, sound like you're going to be running a very tight schedule if you run into any glitches from anybody between the reviews, so we could we could make it the ninth, the sixteenth of August. Would that be a better time? Let's let's do that. Sure. Okay. Do you have a Do you have a uh, application form? Or do I need to mail email you one? Uh, no, we submitted an application form uh, with a digital copy of the materials okay. to Bill. I will look it up. Okay. And, make a, and what we did is we provided a link, um, a downloadable link uh, with right. all of the materials. But, you know, please uh, get back to me if there's nothing, uh, you know, if there's okay. something that was missed in there. We are planning on submitting hard copies um, this week. We only, need, the, we'll, we only need three hard copies. Okay. Because of the because of the digital format, we get we we save a lot of trees. That works for me. <laughs> okay, and I will I will I can't give you a price on the application fee because we recently revised our prices, so it'll be the the price of the legal advertisement plus the mailings, um, plus ten percent. Now, did you? We also need two copies of mailing labels on either envelopes or on labels. Can you get us that? Yes. Okay. You can so, drop those off. You can just drop those off in the town hall if you want in the planning board mail slot. So I, I am going to ask that you do uh, a fourth copy of the uh, of the plans, and when you bring that to the town clerk, um, ask her to get to deliver one copy of the plans to the fire chief okay okay 
he likes to get them in hard copy, but um, if they go through channels, they end up on different desks. Understood. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so when you bring the cop when you bring the hard copy, just bring the two sets of mailing labels or mailing envelopes, whichever is easier for you. And as soon as I get the price of the legal notice from the Gazette, I will put that on the application and get it back, email it back to you. Perfect. Okay. And then I can have Kurt um, you know, cut you with a check accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, the check is delivered to the town clerk with a copy of the application and with the uh, the town clerk gets two hard copies and planning board gets the other two. Of the application. Of the application and of the whole package. The, the, the hard <laughs> copies of the plans, one copy goes to the clerk along with the application. Okay. And then the second copy, you're going to ask the clerk if she could uh, deliver it to the fire chief. Gotcha. But but still bill four copies in total. Yeah, right. Right. Four, if four in total. Got yeah. it. Yep. That way we'll have one for the file and one for anybody else internally who wants to have a hard copy. Got it. Okay. Okay, so you'll be all set for eight sixteen at six forty five. Okay. Very good. Is he going to show us a picture? I can, if yeah, I just just curious. Oh. I had opened your link, but I didn't get all the way through it. So. Okay, bear with me here. Uh, doo -doo. Bill, the uh, town clerk doesn't need extra postage to get that to the fire chief, does she? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Can everybody see that? Yes. 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 So this, so this is the actual rendered us. Uh, current rendered version of the site plan um the hard copy will be included uh as well uh with the plan set so pretty much a very similar layout um as we had presented at the uh, concept meeting last fall uh, we did tweak the building square footage uh, a little bit per request of the client um the parking arrangement um, has been rearranged a little bit uh, just for efficiency um, and circulation through the site. Um, in addition, you know, all the stormwater management BMPs um, have, have been designed as well. And this is basically a rendered version of what the building's going to look like on the site. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, do you have any idea of what kind of clients they're looking to put into this office building? Really to be determined, but it's basically a professional office. Uh, could be a mix, a little mix of medical okay. uh, office as well. But okay. pretty much I classify it as professional office space. You know, it could be doctors, lawyers, engineers, um, okay. that, that sort of thing. Okay. Thank you. Just in the parking, is there going to be an exit into the Staples parking lot? Yes, that yes. is going to be okay. that is going to be retained, um, and that is actually right up in this area here. So yes. that I, that egress is. point will be maintained. Yep, and there'll be a single um, entrance into the site. Um, that's going to be here. Uh, as you recall, it's pretty much a wide open curb cut right now. So we're going to narrow that down to, you know, the, the single access in and out um, at this point here. And then this will uh, all be sidewalk as opposed to open driveway, which is now. Okay. Good. Thank you. What's the name of the building going to be? 
to be determined. <laughs> that that's I think that's a question for Kurt. Okay. Good. Thank you. Anything else for Mr. Gagnon? If not, we'll see you in a month and a half. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Take Thank care. You. Mr. Dwyer? Next up would be Tom Corbett. I'm the battery guy. I'm just here to listen in on um, zoning stuff for the fall. Okay. So no, no comment at the moment. Okay. okay. Um, we don't really have any zoning stuff for the fall in, in development at the moment. I have added that to the agenda as a placeholder so that as we work on things, we will be able to talk about it. We may be take that up a bit with Ken Comia from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So if you want to stay around for it, that you're welcome to it, but it's, it's probably not going to be a deep dive. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, up, Mr. Parmar. Mr. Parmar. Hi, how's it going? Um, just here to informally ask for extension. I think we might be coming up for the 237, 239 road, roadway in for the okay. redevelopment for that hotel. Yep. What do you want? So, to, how long of an extension do you want? We're probably going to, we're hopefully hoping to start this year, but if it could be another, you know, year extension, if it, if we get too late, we want to start next spring. Okay. So if we give you an, do you know when your extension, when your approval was granted? I believe it was summer. I don't miss what time exactly in a summer. Let me Ooh. see if I can find out. So what was the, what was the project? What was the model of? Or, or it might be, oh, the franchise was going to be, um, oh my God, Town, Town Place by Marriott. Okay. So let me let me just uh, check my my archives here. See, is that in the aquifer too? Uh, no, it's it was. Uh, we we listed it under G U L M O H A R Realty, Mr. Dwyer. The public hearing was originally scheduled for June eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Okay, so. At two thirty seven Russell. I'm not sure what, what you called it on your on your file. That's that's what I'm trying to uh, trying to find out which this is the one <clears throat> where we debated what the definition of roof height or ridge was, right? Building yes, height. correct. Actually, the the uh, the TDR was the one for. June eighteenth. The original hearing was uh, May twenty one. Okay, it was TDR. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And it was previously Econo Lodge. I might have it under that. Not okay, here I think I found it. Econo Lodge conversion 2022. No, that, that's, no I think no. it's, it's, it's <laughs> roadway. No, I'm sorry, that's yeah, it, was, it, it, it was roadway. Roadway, yeah. Roadway. Okay. Used to be Econo Lodge a long, long, long time ago. That's that's right. You these uh <laughs> Roadway. No, the uh, the current Econo Lodge was the one that triggered the 
comment that drew fire from the select board about not in my backyard or something. I can't remember. <laughs> All right, let me, town place. Was that town with a E? Correct, correct. And is that one of the Marriott uh, sub? Yeah, it's a Marriott brand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was in the it was in the aquifer. So uh, uh, we voted it uh, July twenty two of nineteen, or, or uh, the decision was filed um, around then. Um, okay. Yes, the vote was held July twenty two of twenty nineteen. Okay. So that they're coming up on the uh, three years. Right. Okay. That site plan approval, um, transfer development rights, APR. Uh, site, plan. Yeah, site plan approval, business use in the Aquifer Protection District, and farmland preservation special permit. Seven twenty two twenty So I'll make a motion uh, to extend. to um, 7-22-2023. I would second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second to extend to 2023. Mr. Parmar's request. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now, Bill, do you want me to send a letter, uh, a new, the usual note to the building inspector, or do we need something more formal? Um, maybe I should send something more formal with a copy to the clerk. Okay. Okay. I, I, I did have another question for uh, another item, if I may. Sure. Go ahead. Um, at our other property, which is the shops at um, 41 Russell Street, we have a neighbor who is asking uh, to rent out some parking spaces and also probably requesting a sidewalk from our property to their property. What would we need for that? I guess really details on how many parking spaces are they going to use? Um, what will that leave you? And if you still have adequate parking, are you going to share the parking between you? Um, Yes, I mean they're going to have. I think they're they're looking for eight spots at at any given time at max. Okay. Um, so you probably need the parking plan regarding would that leave us enough? Um, right. Which it should at this point, seeing that everything's closed. <laughs> what's, what's the nature of the business that wants to rent them? It's a veterinarian office. They, I think, they occasionally have some parking issues in the in the back so um they've they've kind of come to us and asked us is there any possibility that they could use lease out some spaces at that point you know it's 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 grass in between so we, we would need some type of walkway also in between us um which is the other question of do we just need a site plan for that I, I would, yeah, I would say a simple, a simple site plan. We're not, I don't, we're not going to need to hold any hearings or anything. I okay. believe that we could do that just administratively. Okay. So, you know, not basically a, 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 a site plan showing what you want to do, and just okay. a area probably. 
with okay. the details of the entire parcel, like how many spaces, will you have enough spaces left? That's all. Okay, great. Um, yeah, we'll get to work. I'll probably be back in August sometime then. Okay. All right. Any other questions for me? That's it. That's it. All right. Thank Almost. you, guys. Oh, thank you. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Um, I believe that is everyone. Leads it to Ken Comia. Ken Comia. Hi, board. Oh, and uh, I don't believe we ever got a contract. Did we, Ken? Um, I I think I sent one prior to it was there was a lot of attachments, so I think it was including. Um, I'm thinking of that. I believe I did. If not, I will resend it. Um, I might have because you're you know we always I feel like with Hadley, I'm always on in front of the eight ball. So I feel like I've sent it just because you're the first community that I work on the template for every other community. Um, but I could be wrong. Uh, when do you think you might have sent it? Let's see. Probably yep. been mid June. Er, yeah. I've got, the, I, I've got the 2021 in front of me. I can see all that. I don't see one for PBP, PB to sign 2021. 2122 signed. Signed it in August. Um, let me see. I mean, it's not a big deal, kid. If you have one, just, just email it to me. I will get it signed and get it okay. forwarded to the right people here. We'll be all set. Very good. Um, so in that um, contract, I guess, um, one of the questions was what the scope was going to look like. I believe I might have shared the scope and not the contract. Okay. Um, and that maybe sound sound more likely. Yeah, I, th I remember um, getting a scope. Okay. Um, so, you know, I just can quickly go over that. The, the contract is standard, as was the case just, last year. Just remember the contract. Um, I'll get that. The contract of 12500 this year. Correct. Okay. Um, and But the scope included um, the town permitting guidebook. I remember, I recall sharing that um, document from the town of Granby that you thought could be helpful for uh, permitting purposes, um, as well as discussing how to finalize the planning board rules, regulations, and policies because we, we have like a piecemeal approach at the moment, or we've looked at that um, over the past two years. Um, and then the zoning bylaw, with regard to the zoning bylaw, and it sounds as if um, you may be wanting to look at solar, but at the same time, the zoning bylaw, um, knowing that presumably the housing production plan and those processes, which end at the end of this um year, uh, December of 2022, um, there may be some regulatory um, exploration um, if, if that's something that the town wants to look at. So just, you know, acknowledging that that might be something that ari arises um, from this particular um, year. Um, and then talking about, you know, uh, the things that we've had on the scope, which was master plan implementation and any other technical assistance that I can provide. Um, so the 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 main the the larger product is the town permitting guidebook. Um, but I understand, as um, you know, Bill was suggesting earlier, there may be something that you may be looking at for town meeting, um, special town meeting in in the fall. Um, So the, the one loose end on special town meeting was that um, we pulled the article on authorizing a battery hyphen only solar storage facility. The, um, the original ruling from town council was that a battery only facility did not fall under the definition of solar 
Correct. So uh, Jim tried putting something together and uh, was not completely thrilled with how it worked was working out. So we ended up pulling it. Uh, Mr. Corbett, meanwhile, who is the proponent of that project, did send me some materials. Um, and um, I know there had been some concern on the board that we want to be careful about introducing a new um, new type of entity into the mix. On the other hand, no one came to any of the public hearings we had on it. No one, I think I had one phone call from someone who just wanted to be sure we were taking a close look at it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is something that we would uh, certainly consider bringing back, but whether we can pull it together for October, um, it's already a frighteningly short timeline. And you're working on something for some neighboring towns, right? You're not, Ken? Yeah, so uh, that's correct. Um, and I informed Jim because Jim was um, part of some of our discussions that PVPC did in the past fiscal year for open space, residential design, and farmland protection zoning. Um, so I appreciate Hadley's um, uh, contribution to that. But I did inform him that um, PVPC got some grant funds um, from the state to do another similar uh, um, exploration of zoning regulation for um, battery, storage battery, energy storage battery, um, which is... And when you say you got it from the state, who from the state did you get it from? This is from the Department of... Um, EEA, so Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, this is the Land Use Planning Grant. Um, <clears throat> so how we usually get funding through PVPC is towns, um, usually municipal match, which is through participation by town planners. And we have um, contribution from Ware, Belchertown, and Munson to look into this particular issue. Um, Ware particularly because they're, um, they currently just put, I, I believe they put together a moratorium for these types of uses um, in their town meeting. So they're looking at trying to come up with regulation as well. I don't know about the timeline um, because I think this is going to be maybe a longer term, um, but definitely within by next June, um, but that, that's the goal. Um, Jim is correct in that we are looking at that. Um, I think that that could be helpful to the process, um, understanding how this particular um, permit got to and the history of this particular permit would be helpful to that conversation. Um, but I know that many communities are trying to figure out how to permit these types of singular uses as they are relatively novel and new. You know, the uh, proposed, excuse my dog here, he's a hell of a watchdog. The proposed site off of Breckenridge was proposed because it was uh, the place where Eversource needed it. Because three trunk lines or something, Tom, please refresh me. What's the word there? Came in there. Three phase lines. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know if we want to base zoning on what. Ever sources needs are it's their it's their problem that they didn't foresee this issue because we're proposing that it be allowed in the industrial zone so that's my two cents yeah i think the goal is to to look at to look at communities and i know states may be further along considering the the policies and openness to solar because these types of um this type of infrastructure is probably mostly um, solar related, um, but you know, looking at examples from California, New York State. Um, Actually, it's not. This is not solar related. Or perhaps ten percent is solar related, right. if not. Yeah, it's not only solar. Yes, um, but I think the 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 permit that was in front of where was specific to a solar battery. Um, so I think understanding that these particular uses and the familiarity of what used to be these batteries um, located alongside solar arrays 
um, because usual site plans and special permits were issued for those types of uh, developments that now as um, proposed development is coming in for just those big batteries, how do you address, uh, what kind of criteria right. um, would the town be expecting? Uh, certain locations, uh, buffering, whatnot. Um, but I okay. think, you know, we're working with that group and we'll come up with some model regulation, but again, you know, model regulation is, is best practice, but it may not be best practice for Hadley. Um, and that's usually, that's sometimes the case. Right. Yeah, I would like to see us find a way forward, but after giving it all the due research and investigation that it, it, it warrants. I, mean, I, I think I heard some good arguments from Tom Corbett about you know, overall system sustainability, um, and I don't want to go against that, but I also just want to make sure we don't regret it in the future. So, yeah. Always a diplomat. Good job, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> there's not food in my mouth. There's usually a foot, but maybe I got by on this one. Okay. That's, I mean, sounds good. I mean, we can try to tag onto it and adjust it to Hadley, if, if, depending when it gets good. In the meantime, I'll try to put something together, but I think uh, getting something from you will be a whole lot better. Sure. And I, I mean, I, I'd love to take a, a look at your what you brought forward um, at your town meeting before tabling it. Um, I think that could just be very helpful to the conversation because you're obviously thinking of what types of impacts that type of development can have on your neighborhoods. Um, so I'm sure that there are other communities that may be in the same boat um, trying to do this you know, game of balance. Um, and you might be, you know, one of the first communities, at least in this area, that have um, utilized your zoning and council suggesting that this is a very specific use that is not, that your bylaw doesn't necessarily protect. This is something that you're introducing that's new. So, um, I'll, I don't know what we have, what I, what we put together, some other stuff on, on, the, on, on batteries, uh, Ken. Yeah. And what I will do, Ken, is uh, I will just send uh, you and Tom an email so that you'll have each other's addresses. Sure. Because he's, he is in the industry and will probably have some feedback that um, you may not be able to get elsewhere. No, I think that's great. That it's great to make that connection here. Um, Tim is very knowledgeable. Just don't ask him about the goat milk. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you making the connection. <laughs> um, so I, I guess you know it's it's how to uh, move forward with some of the products that we may be looking at um, through the the board um particularly the development guide i know jim had provided some initial comment with regards to one of the statutory requirements for i think it was concom no it was the planning board it was um, a notification um issue but you know if there is some uh, engagement that we want to do around that i'm you know happy to move forward as that as you know as a as a product going forward if that's something that i'm just looking at cobalt here i think that's one of the ingredients in the battery cobalt produces gamma rays and they have a half-life some of some of the uh, range of 30.1 years okay so we certainly haven't talked about that <laughs> so i while we're in a lull here i am going to end this meeting and start a new meeting because we have uh, two and a half minutes left. And I think one more 40 minute uh, stretch should deal with it. How, how are we getting into this disaster, Bill? I do not know. And I can't obviously can't call town hall tonight to okay. figure it out. All right. uh, I have well, not had this problem previously. Right. Um, we've gone on for hours. So and that usually happens with the free version as opposed to the paid and full version. 
the unless the town is using the free version, we we're a sub uh, we're a sub account of the town, right? So um, we should not be uh, constrained. But uh, one more one more shot. Uh, Everybody log out and log back in. Log back in. Thank you for the excitement, Bill. Okie dokie. Okay. All right. Anything else that we have for you, Ken? Um, no, I guess it's, um, you know, looking at that part, that first, whenever the board wants to meet again or, you know, have me come in, um, I'm assuming the board will continue to meet virtually, right? Yeah. We, I don't have a clear understanding of what the rules are going forward. Right. Um, the original, the original clause expired in July, right, Bill? It uh, July 15th or something like that. Right. So we're whatever we're doing, we're good for today. We may or may not be good for our next meeting. I hope right. we will have an answer by then. Um, I'm thinking we probably would like to meet you at our first August meeting if that is something that works for you. That's fine. I know uh, apparently Mike may be away, but um, we'll try to keep I may, it. I may be able to get in. I, I'll be, I'm going to be down at Cape with my Colombian relatives for a few days, but I may, you know. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. So before I forget it, I will make a motion to authorize uh, the chairman to sign the uh, contract. Oh, yeah. Second. We have a second and a yeah, vote motion a second to authorize chairman to sign the PVPC contract for 2022, 23. All in favor? Aye. What was the amount again? Pardon? What was the amount again? $75,000. 12500 12500 Okay. Oh, while we're at it, Bill, one more bill to pay. Our pay for the third, for the last quarter of the year. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we never we never voted that at our last meeting and I got the uh email was it I think it's 575 okay so yeah. FY period, period ending June 30th okay okay I'll make a motion to authorize payment I'll second motion a second to authorize payment for the last quarter all in favor aye uh, aye. Aye. Any, any opposed motion passes unanimously very well if i may jim so i'm i'm i was trying to go through the emails that i sent and i don't know if you took action on this particular invoice but i sent the final invoice uh as well as the proposed um planning board assistance document on june 14th um so i don't know if you took that up at your meeting well, let me verify here. What was the amount of the invoice? Uh, the amount of the invoice was, let me see, 50, one, uh, 1586 dollars and 92 cents. We voted that at our June 21 meeting. Okay, very good. June 21, town accountant, invoice to pay. Planning board assistance, 1586.92, Ken? Yep. That's the one. Okay. Yep. It went to the town accountant. We should be good. You don't see. Um, anything else, Ken? Um, no, I will um, see the board uh, the first meeting in August. Very good. Okay. Do we know what um, we want to talk, be talking about? Or <laughs> I mean, we've, we've, we've created a scope of work here, but <clears throat> do, what do we want to dig into? I mean, you said around uh, oh. some development guides. Do we want to look at what you sent? 
Yeah, I mean, an obvious, yeah. Um, I will send, I know I sent the Granby one, but I will send um, another one that I that we worked on for the town of Pelham. Um, but presumably, you know, if that's something that the town or the, yeah, the town wants to move forward with, um, it may be relatively easy based on a template already being created, um, you know, presuming that we just need to fill in the blanks for certain departments and certain policies or processes that may exist for other departments and, and, and those particular reviews, um, you know, because some towns have the capacity to move a little faster than other towns. Um, but I can review based on that and at least come up with maybe maybe sharing with you at least the planning board function um, of the, for Hadley, just because I'm familiar um, for the most part of some of your policies um, and that we can use that as a head start um, and then build from there. That's a suggestion. Sounds like a starting point. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Building Commissioner, do you have anything? Two things if you have a couple of minutes here. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Um, first one, I'm, I don't want to put anybody in the spot, just something to think about. I have, um, I guess you call it some concerns, com complaints about a food truck in town that it's been permitted by the Board of Health and the Fire Department. However, the Board of Health has given them permission to be there all year until September, October. And the concerns are that, you know, the zoning part, I should be stopping it, that it, it can't be there. And just something to think about, you know, maybe next meeting, what your thoughts are on that. I don't know anything that, where I, as I can stop them, although they're saying, you know, not to throw the Board of Health under the bus, but that they kind of, you know, they don't have that authority to just tell them they can stay there all year. Um, so just something to think about on that one. Where's okay. the location? Is it moving around? Is it hasn't moved. Truck? Where, where is it? it it's the actually silos. at a 100 mil valley. So this is, this it, go, this has some roots. Yes. Um, this is the gentleman that came in and talked to us about having uh, some guitar players. And I knew from the, um, meetings of the project coordination committee that I attend, that there have been some issues about that property turning into some sort of a performance venue. And you may recall that I asked the gentleman about whether he was doing a used, an old car show there. And he said something about, oh, well, we were giving old car drivers free ice cream that night. Um, now, I've heard separately that he has built a performance stage there. Uh, then uh, I saw that uh, he was getting, or, or a, uh, a beer truck was getting a, um, uh, what's the term for it? A one-day liquor license for uh, 14 weekends over the summer for the same property. And then it appears that there's a food truck there, too. Uh, so when he was initially, it, it, and I, I want to be clear, I'm not saying he was untruthful about anything. Uh, he came to us because he had been steered our way from the building department about entertainment permits. Um, and I guess he also had to get a uh, live entertainment license from the select board. But this is one of those things, everything's a little compartmentalized and uh, by the time we get a big picture of what's going on uh, yeah. all of a sudden he's got a performance venue with a beer truck and a food truck for the for the summer in an agricultural residential district um, now if this was his own beer he was selling that would be one thing uh, if it was in a business district like uh, Sugar Shack that would be another thing but um, there are just a lot of layers to this onion about, uh, you know, it, what is allowed in the agricultural residential district. And, uh, okay, his ice cream stand is, but how much can he layer on top of an ice cream cone? 
Yeah, it's, not, it's not even his own food he's serving. <clears throat> he's serving. Right. right. You know, it, it may be his own ice cream. Yes, right. it is. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Cook and Barstow's are all making their own food on site. He is, he is not. So it, it's kind of very unclear what he could be doing here because of the ag residential zone. Um, Why is it unclear? I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> that it's not allowed. It's not allowed. The agricultural exemption is kind of a bit open. Well, in the past, Jim, uh, I, I remember we were talking about uh, hot dog stands in outside of uh, Home Depot, like they have in West Springfield. And we did not want anything like that allowed. Right. And, and the Board of Health had a rule at the time that if you didn't have a restroom at the site for them to use, they couldn't do it. However, this Board of Health has allowed them to do that. So they've changed their mind for whatever reason. And I think a lot of that is because Board of Health regulations are not clearly written down. There's probably a lot of COVID sympathy for small businesses. Well, what would you like to do, Tom? You're, you're the enforcer of the zoning bylaw. What would you like to do? Right. There isn't, you know, there, I can't find anything for a food truck or, or that. I was kind of looking for to think about for the guidance. I mean, I do. The other part of my question was the entertainment that you had given them permission. I was told they were there till seven o'clock last or this weekend. I believe you had said six. Is that correct? You know the time limit because that's something I do have to act on. I mean, it's nice to see a business doing well, but it, it where the feedback's coming is we're going to have other people complaining that they're not allowed to or weren't allowed to. I stopped in for ice cream one day. I think he recognized me and was a little bashful because they were way over parked. That, that day was just, you know, they were out into the field. Saturday and Sunday, two to 6 p.m., Tom. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was reliable source at seven the other night. So I guess I'll have to, I'll just stop in and tell them it is six o'clock. Yeah. Yes. Well, when we start, when people start, uh, splitting hairs is it allowed is it not allowed uh, when we write when our zoning bylaws in most town zoning bylaws are written it's it written in an exclusive fashion nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except and it's listed so that is another thing that uh, I think the building inspector can hang his hat on so there is this bylaw review committee going on. Jim, are, are you connected into that? Yes, but we're not reviewing zoning bylaws. Right. And, and I'm not sure this necessarily needs to be a zoning bylaw per se. Uh, you know, there may be a zoning enforcement issue here that you shouldn't be doing food trucks and beer trucks in an agricultural residential district. Um, that may be something we're going to have to get some guidance from our next town council on about. Um, yeah. But, um, but also maybe some of it can be dealt with, with other sources of regulation. I think it's also important that we're consistent, that we are not subject to being called arbitrary and capricious. All right. Well, I will. I will definitely give them a, you know, make a visit out there and tell them about the six o'clock, um, as opposed to a letter or anything. And, and I'll, I'll let them know I have concerns. I mean, I they're all willing to put it in writing. I don't have anything in writing now, but they're all willing to. Um, and if we, you know, if we have to go that route, we'll have to, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rennick, you had two questions, Tom. What was the other one? That was, that was the other one. So Tom, your microphone is still very spotty. Unless you speak right into it, we 
we don't hear you. Sorry, the second question was the six o'clock uh, curfew. Okay. Oh, okay. Jim, um, so we're going to be starting to do the scanning of uh, the planning board map. Okay. So uh, Terry, what she did, what we're going to do for now is just um, have a folder that's the planning board and inside that folder is going to be split up into the different um, businesses and things like that that you guys have plans for. Okay. She also has a list too of what she's already scanned in the system and then she'll double check like we had spoke before to make sure we don't have duplicates. Okay. And then we're just going to transfer what copy whatever we have already into your folder also. Okay. Um, but, and you know, when you get a chance, if you want to start getting uh, some of the plans together for her, uh, she'll start going through those for you. Okay. I got to come into the town hall to see you tomorrow anyways for something else. So I'll get, remind me to do something like that. Okay. Sounds do good. We have a, do we have an established system for file naming? Because that makes it much more easy to search it later. We're, if there's a consistent. Going, Mark. We're going to use exactly the same filing system that the building department uses. Okay. And then once we have that, we can always take and maneuver it around to our liking once we have that system. Okay. Yeah, especially the businesses, she's trying to do it as the address and the name of the business. Yeah, so th then that's pretty much what we're going to need. We'll be able to get it. Yeah, because for the most part, mostly everything you guys have is either developments or businesses. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then as you saw with the uh, Mr. Parmar's uh, hotel, we can't remember. <laughs> there have been so many iterations of that property that um, <laughs> what it was approved at initially versus what it was reapproved at. Uh, it, the address is really critical. Otherwise, you just have... <laughs> Maybe multiple businesses have operated under the same roof over the years. I would I would just make an obvious suggestion that when you do the address, if that's how the file starts, you start with the street name and then the number follows. So all the Russell Streets are together. Otherwise, 102 Russell Street will be right next to 103 Stockbridge or, you know. Right. Yeah, the, uh, today we, we found out like uh, Pearson Group, they have actually two different buildings. Um, I just happened to know by looking at the picture which building it was. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing. There was no address actually on the plans and it actually ended up being the, the 380 Russell. Um, so that's why we're also trying to find the ones that we don't have an address on to figure which ones those are. Okay. So they, they created the file folder for us? I'm going to create one for her. And then she knows what's, you know, what to do from there. And then she's going to start copying any of them that she's going to make sure she looks at the file, what's in it, okay. um, before she just copies it over. Because there are some things that you guys might have. Well, I mean, in the server, we have, we have a, the file, our, it's been created no. for us. Not yet. So we're, okay. we're just going to do it under the building department for okay. now. And, and just then, transfer it over? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. The folder once uh, okay. the IT guy comes in and sets it up. But I kind of don't want to delay you, that, you know, her by uh, waiting for, you know, IT or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bill, Bill you and I got to see Carolyn because we can't access the town server with our computers. We're going to have to get a town computer to do this. Okay. I believe. Right, because they do have the shared uh, network. Okay. Okay. Your, your mic isn't. Sorry, and Terry, um, my lone voice. Terry will keep probably half a dozen a week that. She's questioned or whatever that we'll look over and make sure we get it right before she does scan it. So she she'll hold them back back and you know wait till find an answer from somebody before we put it in there. Okay. Okie dokie. That's it. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. Mr. Gennady, do you have anything? 
Okay. No, just here to listen. Thank you. Uh, I see Hadley Media joined. Uh, Hadley Media, just so you know, Bill started recording, so he's got a separate recording for the third go round. I will uh, send that along. Um, I will make a motion to add Bucky Sparkle to our peer review engineer yes. list. Yes. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. To add Bucky Sparkle. Any discussions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Maybe I should just add for the sake of anyone who is looking in and wondering where this came from. Our primary criteria for determining who is eligible to be on our town list of engineers approved to conduct peer reviews of applications pending before us basically comes down to have you done a project, have you done a complex project in town and have you handled it well? And have you demonstrated a, um, an understanding of our bylaws and regulations? And uh, Mr. Sparkle worked through the Ideal Movers uh, Climate Controlled Storage on South Maple Street, which was one of the most complex projects we've had come forward in the last three or four years. And uh, demonstrated that he really uh, did pay attention to our bylaw and uh, certainly has the underlying engineering expertise. He was also recommended by someone else on the peer review list uh, by an engineer from a firm on the peer review list, Berkshire Design. And uh, as it happens, we have an opening on the peer review list because the uh, one of the uh, uh, people on the list apparently uh, closed their Northampton office and uh, left the uh, left the Northeast. So we had a vacancy and we have a reason for adding someone who knows what they're doing. Um, the other items that I have on the agenda are primarily placeholders to allow us to discuss various things um, you know, as, as they come up in the future. Um, so I don't think there are any of those that are, any others that are active at the moment. We already voted on payroll. Are there any other bills, Jim, for? No, that's, that's the only one. Just as a, no other bills. However, I just wanted to give you an update on the uh, housing, what's the committee bill, Ken? Housing yeah. plan. The pardon housing production plan committee the uh we had some surveys that, that were distributed the senior center newsletter um was received in most most of the senior citizens mailboxes today there was a note in there about the surveys being available in the town hall senior center and library um, each of those locations were given surveys today and a little poster i will be giving one to the transfer station tomorrow you can fill them out online. You can fill out a paper copy. There's a little QR code you can scan if you want to do it with your phone or bring it home and uh, do the survey at home. Probably takes about 10 minutes. It's all about basically housing in Hadley. Does it have enough? Should it have, you know, should it have more? However, housing right now, as we all know, is insanely expensive. So it's going to be a survey we're going to accomplish, but um, to try to make it affordable, I have no idea how that's going to really accomplish. I mean, there's a house that's not too far away from me. There's a nice house, and it's sold for an insane amount of money. It was on a market for less than a week. So if you got a new house or a good house on a the market, they're going quick and they're going high. I will update um, you, Jim, that um, and to, to both you and Andrew, we do have, I just quickly looked at the survey. Um, we have 22 responses online. So oh, really? no, wherever wow. you're posting it, wherever you posted it, people are responding to it. Wow. What is your goal in terms of response? Or do you, well, what do you consider a success? Well, I think 
Okay. When I did a similar um, survey effort two summers ago, and this was during COVID, um, for the town of Southampton, we had 900 responses um, and there are a ton of about what, 60, 6,200. So I think, you know, we can replicate that. I think that's awesome. You limit them from stepping the ballot box? To the best that we can. I mean, I'm hoping that people, you know, obviously there it's always difficult to try to eliminate that, but between Jim and I, um, you know, understanding that we also have to do inputting of any physical copies that we do. I think we can possibly determine, we ask for an optional, we have an optional question about where you live. Um, you know, that can kind of um, hopefully persuade the person filling out the survey. Um, I like to have more confidence that that, you know, that they just fill out one, um, whether they do it online or on paper. I mean, yes, it, the, the way the online work is pretty difficult to stuff the ballot box, uh, the paper copies, um, it's a bit more difficult. We also don't have a gazillion paper copies out there. Right. But we'll see. I mean, it's nothing, I don't wanna say there's, there's there, there aren't really too many, many questions in this, uh, survey plus it's just a survey i mean nothing you're not locking anything in you know, some things you may have to take with a grain of salt we hope not we'll see and the other component to jim is that you know this is this is going to be a one of at least two or three engagement with the community um so you know there's going to be prime opportunity to share other thoughts during like virtual meetings or in-person meetings if that's what the yeah. committee decides to do we hope to have the surveys done pretty much in, uh, I believe, September, have some uh, public forums in the fall, maybe two, mm -hmm. maybe three, and then uh, compile a report by the end of the year. Is that the goal, Ken? Yes, that's the goal. So. Um, that's all I have. Anything else, anybody? I have nothing else. Um, I will get uh, in touch with Town Hall and figure out what's going on with uh, with the planning board Zoom. If if I need to, I have my own Zoom account um, that I can um, I can host the planning board meetings on it, and Hadley Media can join. It won't. The invitation will not look any different. Uh, than what you have been getting from the town account. Uh, obviously, I'd like to be able to uh, keep them separate if I can, but uh, we'll make sure that we don't have this circus two weeks from now. Okay. <laughs> Cross your fingers over there, Mr. Dunn. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, I have Got coffee. Else. Got coffee. Come and get it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Andrew. Have a good night. Thank you, John. And John, I will uh, forward the, uh, uh, the the tape or the, my recording to you by the WeTransfer portal. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Bye. Okay.